Tonight on Country Squire Radio, it's the War of the Roses with a tobacco talk. That's right. We're talking two tobaccos that uh, you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, we've also got a great uh, pipe question of the week coming in about stems. Should you take them apart when you smoke them? Is it a universally true? Am I even stumbling when I'm trying to explain the question? Yes uh, to the last one. Maybe not to the first two. Regardless, we've got that. We've got quick fire questions, your listener feedback, and more happening right now on tonight's Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, this is gonna be great. Yeah, there you go. It's, <laughs> it's about sticking the landing, not not launching appropriately. Let's try that one more time. I'll drink to that. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo, and I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Man, good evening to you, sir. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> you know, I'm doing okay. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little congested. You know, as we've talked about in in the past, you you kind of. I don't know. Once a quarter, maybe a couple times a year in the South, we get this kind of the rolling, the, crud. the rolling crud. Yeah, we just call it the crud. And so, uh, yeah, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm totally eat up with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. If you're uh, on the other end of this podcast and are are used to uh, to to Bo and my voice uh, just kind of uh, whispering into your ears, <laughs> right? With, uh, the NBR, beautiful, yeah, uh, yeah b- beautiful talk of uh, pipe tobacco and and and, <laughs> and handsome briar pipes. Tonight, tonight, I probably sound a lot worse than uh, than even normal. So we we could have been. We, you know, we could have been NPR, like National mm-hmm. Pipe Radio, you know? National we, Pipe Radio. We, we could have. That, that, that's a, that's an off We kind of already round. started that, hadn't we? Yes. Like, um, I don't know if we got us and and Brian and Oli. I mean, that's that's a lot of content right yeah, there. Yeah, no, huh? but see, like, all of our yeah. styles are not very NPR. Like, we'd have to go, like, um, yes, and um, we've got a, a wonderful Perique. You and I would be, like, that click and clack guy that talk about their cars the car on, people? like, Saturday morning. Some car talk. Yeah, car yeah. talk, you know. We'd They're be, off the air, aren't they? I, I think they might be. I can't remember. But My we, wife be those, loved car you know talk. How the, those are the guys. They're from, like, uh, uh, what Boston? They're right. I think they're right outside of yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. around Harvard or something. They got that accent. We, yeah, we, we, yeah, because we don't have accents at all. So no. we, <laughs> we'd be the like southern deep fried version of that. We'd be the so wise the guys that come up on here and we'd uh, you know we talk, we'll talk about, about pipes and stuff. Yeah, get you know? your pipe. You got Do you have your tobacco packed in it? We we could do that. You know, we yeah. we could make that real nice. <laughs> We could do that. I real, real nice. nice. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Did you godfather now? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just kind of all over the map at this point. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm getting words out audibly, this is a win. So, yeah, well, we're, hey, we're, we're just going for that. Look, we're all we're all really happy that you're here. And by the way, uh, John David and I are very happy that you are here, uh, dear listener. Those of you tuning into the podcast. Also, those of you who are tuning in live at CountrySquireRadio.com. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, and uh, we we hope to have a, a really great show to you. Of yep. course, last week uh, it, for a, those who missed it, yeah, what a what is what an event! What it was spectacle. our two hundredth episode. <laughs> That's right. And you know, uh, John, Day, we were just talking before we went live. We had uh, so many great guests, and and especially want to give a shout out to those of you who, who traveled so far. I yeah, mean, it was it was really amazing. Uh, friends, uh, Howard, all the way from Atlanta. Uh, you know, Eric from Houston, Patrick from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. These are these are people that literally drove to Jackson, Mississippi, for no other reason than to than to spend with us uh, that evening uh, as we got to celebrate the 200th episode of of not just the show, but of our of our community. You know, I was kind of yeah. uh, reflecting on that earlier. It's it's become more than just a you know just the you know hour we do this each week, but uh, but the greater community. So uh, man, it was just so awesome. I mean, particularly Howard and Eric uh, coming from so far away. Uh, to celebrate with us just because you could, you know, it, uh, it really, really was very, uh, very heartwarming to us. And uh, we, we had a great turnout. Everyone was uh, festive and uh, man, it was just, uh, it was really exciting. It we really were here was. late, mostly because late, the pizza late. took forever to get here. The pizza did take forever to get here, but you know, it, it, it placed like the, quarter the shopping center that we're in you would think more pizza places would deliver here but uh, the only one we get her is uh papa john's well i gotta tell you if i was a pizza delivery person and i walked up to the country square today i would probably turn around because you literally have <laughs> the roof falling down on all of us around here. this shop is such a dump <laughs> it's it's crazy guys like it's a, a disaster ladder, there's, yeah there's, yeah it's... so so yeah if, you, if you're here and you, you can't really see this if you're watching the live show tonight but um because we're just focused in on the tobacco bar here. But um, yeah, so we have had uh, kind of construction time over the past few days. They, as part of our lease agreement, the uh, kind people that own the quarter have agreed to uh, paint the shop and replace all the ceiling tiles in the shop. Well, these ceiling tiles have not been uh, replaced or exchanged uh, since um, the first Nixon administration. And and so <laughs> wait, is that that could be true? Is that true? No, that's actually true. Okay, so that's not an exaggeration. Yeah, no, they they have <laughs> they, they, as far as the records indicate that the shop has not had any maintenance to the ceiling tiles or lights uh, in forty six wow. years. Wow! Yeah. If so, these um, tiles could talk, man. they would tell some terribly. <laughs> 
ridiculous story. <laughs> Honestly, but, in the uh, condition there, and they'd be like, kill me. Well, you know, it's funny. I tried to get the <laughs> landlord to bite on maybe just taking the tiles out altogether mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and and leaving this really nice exposed kind of ceiling with the beams and stuff. And they, they wouldn't go for it. They wanted to put back in the old uh, commercial ceiling tiles. So so we're going to have those, and, and they'll be beautiful, uh, beautifully uh, nicotine colored in, uh, in here, <laughs> here in a couple months. We'll be doing our part. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, our shop is kind of a wreck. There's like uh, just, you know, dust everywhere. And we've had contractors coming in and out all day. And, um, you know, just, just one more wrinkle in uh, the life of a, 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 a tobacconist. You know, what I love is that uh, while, while even the ceiling tiles are, are some, some fresh ones, some old ones, some hanging off the side of the walls, right. uh, regardless of all that, what is still hanging here above uh, the uh, the shop and and uh, right in front of us as we record the podcast yep. every single week are uh, are your your tobacco leaves that have been That's aged right. in this uh, in this you, very shop. You know, Bo, I actually grew that tobacco. I don't know if you knew that. The, okay, um, I thought those were the ones that the dude I, brought. Well, he he brought it, but then he was like, "Here, do what this what you want to." And so I, I wound up putting them in these planters out in front of the yeah. shop. Oh. And uh, and so they they grew the tobacco plants were beautiful. It's actually the same variety of burley that they use to make perique from. Really, they're really interesting. So. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this perique, uh, you know, these perique plants uh, grew out in front of the shop for, um, gosh, I don't know, just one season, I guess. And after several months, they were starting to peak. And so I harvested them and uh, and took the leaves and put them up there. And and so they kind of, yeah, if you've ever been in our shop and just happened to look up, they they kind of hang like mistletoe, you know, yeah. in the shop. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, oh, who, who meets under the, uh, the, t- <laughs> the tobacco tree at the squire. Yeah. That's so, a terrifying uh, prospect right there. I know, right? Yeah. Someone, you know, it, there's, those leaves have been up there now for about five years. I was about and, to say. Uh, we, we've had several people like, man, let's take one down and crush it up and smoke it. <laughs> and I, I want you to know how bad of an idea that is. <laughs> and like, it, you, you know, I, I'm always like, you know what, you can smoke it, but I just, I have to watch and we have to have uh, the sweet people at St. Dominic's Hospital down the road right, on, right. on call when, when that happens. But uh, th- those things have uh, collected so much dust and so many smoke particles from God knows what <laughs> over the past five years. There's no telling what those things would taste like. But, but they look beautiful. Um, but they are really, really pretty and they're a nice addition to the uh, to the ambiance here. Well, speaking of nice additions, there's a nice addition to the pipe community as a whole coming later this oh, year. That's a good segue. There. I yeah. do what I can. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'm talking, of course, about the, uh, the Texas Pipe Show. Uh, now that's right. Uh, October, Giddy up, son. This coming October, it's going to be a blast. Um, we've we've mentioned this before. We're going to start mentioning it a lot more as we build up to it. Uh, but October seventh through the eighth uh, at Pop Safari Room in the Fort Worth, Texas area. Uh, you're going to want to make your plans. You're going to want to be there uh, because it is going to be a awesome, awesome experience. Uh, a pipe show like the likes of which you have never seen, um, that's unless. True. You have been to a pipe show in Fort Worth, which I don't think has ever existed prior to now. So uh, that's right. That's <laughs> there you right. Go. Um, but yeah, we were just talking about it. We're planning on being there, and it's uh, going to be really great. So, with the seventh and eighth of October, seventh and eighth of October, Pop yeah. Safari Room, Fort Worth, Texas. That's right. Uh, put on by all our good friends over there. We've got so many good friends uh, across the state of Texas: Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin. Uh, it, you know, um, and and we're just really excited to be a part of that. They've actually invited me, Bo, to uh, to make a, a blend for the show. They're going to actually use oh. for the long smoke competition, which I think will be kind of fun. So, oh, um, anyway, we're just we're excited to be a part of that. That's yeah. so that's interesting because, like, you know, if if you're making the blend, right. And you're here. I mean, you know, you, you like to like, you're making a blend. You like to get people's feedback. No, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, like, you know, we, when, when we travel, uh, when we go to pipe shows, you know, we, we bring a, a bit of an entourage. I think it's a thing. For, yeah. safe, safe. <laughs> I'm, you call the goofy rednecks that hang out with us our entourage? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> like pitchforks and shotguns. <laughs> I mean, they're terrifying, but, but you know, they, they, we, we bring some folks. I'm just saying, yeah, that's great. is it possible for, you know, the Jackson folks to try the blend that you're going to have? I mean, will we get kind of, you know, early field advantage? I from don't know about that. I, I, I kind of, I don't know. I tend to, I tend to think uh, the Lone Star State folks that might, might get first. Dip. Okay. All right. So, all yeah. right. All I'm just saying, like, you're here, you're blending it. You, you might need some feedback. You, you know, but I'm also a Texan. I mean, a lot of folks forget oh, that's that as true. well. I, yeah. I was I was born in Houston, you know, and and I still have family all over East Texas. Um, you know, I try to get back there as often as I can. My girlfriend, <laughs> uh, my girlfriend, uh, makes makes a regular habit of of letting me know that she loves me more than she hates Texas. Oh, that's, so, good. that's uh, good. And 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 so that's good. That's that's kind of part of the glue, <laughs> part of the glue that holds our, our relationship together. That's right. You but, know, the, um, the, that but, is but, yeah. I, I think. Yeah, we're going to take care of the Texans. On this all right. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Interesting. Didn't know your loyalties were going to be that split, but that's, that's all right. That's good. 
Um, well, that, that sounds like a, a blast. So, uh, like I said, make your plans. Be there October 7th through the 8th. Pop Safari Room, Fort Worth, Texas. going to be a blast. Long smoke competition with Blend uh, made by none other than John David Cole. Uh, John David, remind me, when, when we did the long smoke competition, uh, who, 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 uh, who actually came in uh, uh, higher than the other person? I, I, I think... Um, y uh, uh, I be, I, what, I, you, you know, my, me? Memory, my memory doesn't go back. Did you beat me? Maybe you, know, you beat me. I, I unless unless you recall <laughs> something that you could correct me on. Are, are are you talking about the competition where uh in in New Orleans? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, oh, last, last oh, time that we competed yeah. against each other. Yeah, I, yeah, you totally beat me. Both. Okay, all right. But by, by a solid what four or five minutes? I mean, was it was it? it was legit. It was it was it was solid. Yeah, yeah. I was in the top ten. I really tried to forget about <laughs> it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> that's not my on my don't let it die crowning achievements in life. <laughs> Um, well, hey, uh, before we jump into the topic, uh, we have got to give a major shout out to two new Country Squire Radio Pipe Club members. Man, that's so great. We're so thankful for y'all. Absolutely. Joining at the Squire level, and be prepared, guys. I'm going to butcher both of your names. <laughs> that's how it works. Joining at the Squire level, we've got Gene Boker. Gene Boker. Uh, do you think that I got it right? I think you nailed it. Balker, then I got. I feel like I need to like force get it wrong. At you this you point. need to. You need to. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, like, at least try, right? For, look, so Gene could feel part of the club. Absolutely. Look, Gene. Uh, Gene joined at the Squire member. Welcome, Gene. We appreciate you uh, being part of the club. Gene's also been uh, very active as soon as he joined the club. He's been great at uh, sending feedback on Facebook on. Uh, on the uh, uh, the Patreon and uh, man, we just we really appreciate it. He gives a, a major shout out to us. Says congrats on two two hundred. So That's really great. We really Thanks so much for joining, Gene. We also have joining at the Pilgrim letter. Le nope. We also have joining at the Pilgrim level, Steve. Ayers. 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 He waves his hands in the air. Ayer. Ayer. <laughs> Wait, why did I just do that? On I don't camera? know. I don't oh, know. That's going to come back to bite me. It will. It, it will. <laughs> you, you, you've already provided some nice content tonight, Bo. Uh, the the our our meme. <laughs> Our our meme warriors are already in full blast. So I gotta I, tell you, you know, I, I just I just love the live show. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, if if you've never tuned in for a live show, sometimes just just scan through our Twitter account no, you and you'll see, get on Twitter occasionally. That's you'll right. see what the memeing folks do. And y'all, Gene and Steve, thank you so much for uh, for joining the. Uh, <laughs> For joining the Pipe Club, we we really appreciate it, and uh, and and Pipe Club members, of course, you know we've talked about this uh, just uh, on and on, but we uh, we we are very thankful for you, and of course, uh, you're a really key part of making the show happen. So, I'm but Bo, Bo's about to uh, have a coronary. I'm sorry, the the meet me under the tobacco leaves and <laughs> country squire solid. for this pipewife dot com that's uh, pretty, promo. That's pretty solid. Y'all are y'all are just. Mm. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we've got a we've got an awesome episode tonight. Uh, it's a tobacco talk. Now, it is. It sure is. The tobacco talk series um, has been one of our, our earliest, longest running series that we do, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a tobacco talk. It's a review, uh, generally of two tobaccos. That's right. Um, it's taken the form of a couple of different things. Sometimes it's been like a tin, and sometimes it's been a Squire blend, and sometimes it's been both Squire blends. Sometimes it's been both tins. Every once in a while, we'll throw three in there. Just um, kind of mix it up. Yep. Mix it up a little bit. But tonight is is not just any tobacco talk. That's um, right. That's right. Tonight, uh, it's kind of the mother of all tobacco talks, isn't it? It's it's. I mean, I mean, at least from a you know, this is this isn't fun and games, people. From a rivalry standpoint, the, the tobacco that we're talking about tonight, um, we've got two blends, two blends that will be discussed here as as part of this tobacco talk. Um, one of which a uh, a long running uh, blend that has uh, sat the. Uh, uh, upon the throne behind us. That's for, right. For for far too long. That's right. Uh, some by, would by argue itself. Yeah. By uh, itself. Un unchallenged. Really. Unchallenged. Right. Some would argue that it's been there for far too long, and it really never That's never right. deserved to be there. Honestly. <laughs> uh, and then we've got a a, a newcomer. <laughs> That uh, will will gladly. It, some would argue usurp. Others would say has the rightful uh, place on the shelf. And if you don't know what I'm alluding to here, we've got two tobaccos, Lancaster and White Rose. That's right. That is right. All right. But so, both these are Squire original blends. Yeah. And uh, we we thought this would be kind of fun. So we I mean we've essentially got the uh, just a, just a beautifully smelling War of the Roses right here at the tobacco bar at Ye Old Pipe Shop. All right. So. Let's get this this um, uh, just this aged, ugly looking um, piece of just foul, I vindictive, mean, just 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 smelly. You know, I mean, the tobacco looks amazing. It's just the label itself and the word that's on it. It's hard for me to even read. So why don't we do that one? That you you want to do that one first? Let, okay. Let's get it out of the way. Let's <laughs> this, get it. Out. This uh, Bo, of course, was talking about Lancaster. We we thought we'd have a little fun with this tonight because uh, if you did tune in last week for uh, our two hundredth episode. 
we I, I surprised Bo. Uh, it was it was kind of cool. I, I was worried I wasn't going to be able to keep the cat in the in the, in the bag uh, because I you know was working on it kind of hard and. Uh, I surprised Bo and actually uh, made a blend for him, and we called it White Rose. And uh, White Rose, of course, is is um, uh, the rose of the House of York. That's right. And, uh, and and we named that in honor of him. And uh, and and um, and so we wanted to have a little fun with that, and uh, and and also come out with a blend that you know would help support the show and that kind of thing. So, um, but uh, you know, so this week we're we're going to take the Lancastrian. Uh, route first, and and then we'll get to White Rose, and we can kind of have a have a sparring match between the two. I, I mean, you know, there's no there's no sparring here. I mean, you know, the, it's just defeat. It's just yeah. I mean, just like straight up defeat. That's the, that's what this is. Right. That's what this is. <laughs> uh, Lancaster is. Uh, we we've had Lancaster now uh, here at the Country Squire about seven years. Uh, Lancaster uh, was new when I started working at the shop, and it, really, it, believe it or not, um, this is uh, the last blend that Mrs. Reeves herself. Uh, blended, yeah, and and so Mrs. Reeves, of course, uh, she was the the founder and owner of the Country Squire for uh, I, I guess at that point about forty two years, Gosh. Um, and so she had uh, founded the shop with her husband in nineteen seventy, and uh, and and the last blend that she uh, you know herself had worked on was was Lancaster. She actually named Lancaster, and forgive me, my voice is just is terrible. I know no, y'all are really suffering with me uh, tonight, but. Um, that's why you got. That's why you got the boodles. That's why I got boodles, which I go. think I'm gonna take a sip. <laughs> um, Mrs. Reeves named Lancaster as such um, because Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, uh, is where the um w- was where the flavor and and the candy caramel was mm. actually developed. And so this is our caramel flavored blend uh, here at the shop. Now I'm kind of curious. I mean, like that's that to me that seems like. Just a, a trivial bit of information, like yeah, you know, the sure. average Joe on the street is probably not going to know the history of caramel, or uh, from that standpoint. Sure. Any idea why, in particular, that that inspiration came to her? I mean, this was long before Google. That's well, not something... long before Google, but she, let's just Mrs. Reeves probably wasn't using Google. Mrs. Reeves did she? What, what is a Google? Is probably <laughs> right, what right, she right. would have said. Right. <laughs> uh, and we, and I love Miss Gwen, and think of her very often. She was a dear, a dear lady that taught me so much about uh, the job and shop that I love, but. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, she, she was so big. She, she named all these tobaccos that sit here behind us, Bo, uh, before she came and she was so big on, uh, finding some kind of common, uh, you know, uh, some type of deeper meaning in something. I mean, she, there was no tobacco that went on the shelf with her that was just called like, you know, mm. sweet cherry or, yeah. you know, uh, you know, uh, burly and bright or whatever. Like uh, she would have none of that. Like every, every single tobacco, uh, the name was extremely so thought out that, uh, you know, for her telling a story was very important. I think that's why I connected with her so, so well, because she was such a romantic and liked to tell these stories. And, um, and, and so when she, you know, did research on this, she wanted to learn about well, where did caramel come from right. and who were the people that developed it and why did they uh, make it and how did it differentiate itself from chocolate and all these other things. So, um, so that's where it came from. And, uh, and I think she had a lot of fun with that. And I mean, like you said, I mean, she she developed this blend. Do you know any idea just off the top of your head? And I, I know I'm asking a lot of you know uh, unpremeditated no, it's questions. Okay. It's okay. I, do, do any idea like how many of the the current blends were actually from specifically Mrs. Reeves' her her recipe? I actually I don't know uh, specifically from her. Yeah, because a lot of them over the years, you know, some were developed by her husband right, back yeah. in the seventies and eighties. Um, some were developed by her daughter. Uh, some were developed by her grandkids. And then, of course, we've had several that have been developed over the years by customers and friends that have just, uh, you know, had their own private blends uh, that, you know, for whatever reason, have become really popular. Um, and then they wind up in a jar on the shelf, you know. I, I think specifically of P.S. Blend here behind me that, uh, you know, Paul Simmons, he was a guy that died in 1979. Right. Yeah. His private blend was so popular in the 70s that <laughs> it, it wound up on the shelf. And, uh, you know, he he, he, um, he hasn't been with us for over 30 years, but his blend, uh, his blend's still, still right here. So. Now, was she like a big, you know, I, I guess I, I'm kind of curious if you know, you know, with, with kind of the recipes that she came up with, were, was there a candy theme? Was it, does she, does she more of an aromatic smoker or, or how is that? You know, what's funny, Mrs. Reeves actually was not a pipe smoker, which is kind of neat. A lot of, a lot of, um, your, that's amazing to me. A lot of, a lot of your old fashioned, uh, ladies that were around pipe shops, you know, they didn't necessarily smoke pipes, but they, uh, but they, they knew enough about it to, to, you know, blend good tobaccos and be able to speak the, 
speak knowledgeably about them um, and authoritatively. And so um, it, it was kind of neat too. I know as since we're kind of walking down memory lane a little bit, it would, it would be cool, uh, you know, at, at the time uh, that there wasn't nearly as much traffic in the Squire. And so uh, me and Mrs. Reeves, she might sell a pipe or, you know, help someone with tobacco or something. And the customer would leave and, uh, and it'd be just me and her sitting here, maybe drinking coffee. And, um, and Bo, she would always get this little starry eyed look in her eye. And, and and she'd kind of be looking into the distance often out the back door and she would say something like, you know, you could tell she was thinking about her husband and she, she would say, you know, the words just come to me because they were his words. Oh man. There's that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and so, uh, she, she would always talk about how, uh, you know, certain types of pipes and pipe tobaccos were very kind to the mouth. <laughs> and, and she said, she would say that, you know, she was really just, uh, it just uh just just she could hear her husband jim saying those things as 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 she was saying them and uh i, I don't know there's something really special about that yeah, so, that's beautiful. so lancaster's a part of that and uh of course even though it's got a just a filthy disgusting name uh, well, it, well it, i was gonna it, say it, lancaster makes the room smell just makes it smell pretty good look the know? fact of the matter is you open up a jar of lancaster and you immediately get hit i mean like that's car right caramel 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 it, it, it's caramel um and and um, yeah, it, it is pronounced caramel. All right, car um, car <laughs> caramel. <laughs> but like the caramel does, I mean, immediately just hits you in the face. And I mean, it does. A lot of people also get butterscotch. Um, and, I can see that. And, and, and we have the occasional uh, folk, too, that uh, regularly get, and this is probably uh, on our part by design, although we won't tell you why, but because uh, that's proprietary and we, we tell you, but we'd have to kill you. Uh -huh. uh, but but sometimes you might even get little notes of coffee that come through as well, oh, interesting. Uh, which is kind of fun. So, um, yeah, the uh, Lancaster, it's a it's a blend of Cavendish and Virginia's. Uh, there's a dash of Burley there. But um, but this is all just kind of a a, a lightly cased uh, a, a mixture. The Cavendish is a little more cased than the than the Burley or Virginia's. Uh, but it's just a real nice aromatic. It makes me every time I light it uh, think of being um, uh, like in a coffee shop or a yeah. bakery. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it, it does. You almost kind of get that sense of like you're you're in Italy somewhere and you just finish right. off your espresso and your little uh, you know. Uh, I don't know if you remember that, that bakery that you took me to in New Orleans. Oh uh, no, yeah, I love that. But place. but that that bakery it reminds me of being in a place like that. Yeah, yeah. Just 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 extremely aromatic in in a very pleasant way, a warm a warm room kind of way. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, you know the nice thing about Lancaster is that it burns to a uh, a very fine powder. Mm. Um, and you can't say that about all. Uh, aromatic tobaccos. So this is definitely not a syrupy tobacco. It's one of those that uh, has plenty of flavor, but um, you know, it is is going to be on the moderate moisture side. It's not. It's certainly not dry, but it's certainly not a not a syrupy uh, aromatic tobacco. Well, you know, the the worst thing about it is how delicious it tastes um, because it does have such an unfortunate name. I know, um, right? I know. And 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 you know, to some extent, it, it made the choice. I don't know if you've uh, ever watched uh, or ever seen Henry the Sixth or read Henry the Sixth. I have not. All right. Well, uh, you know, it's it, making an unfortunate choice is is part of the the War of the Roses, especially in kind of the Lancaster lineage. And so, uh, <laughs> it, it it does make sense that that would be uh, the tragic case of this. Uh, tobacco. We'll just go ahead and put it back here. You know, um, <laughs> you just go ahead. Yeah, yeah just one. go ahead right. and hide it right there. Right. <laughs> All right. So now that's that's the bad. Let's talk right. about the good. Okay. Okay. Uh, All so, right. That's, so that's the evil, and let's talk about the the good, the uh, righteous, uh, the, the, the righteous, perhaps. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Man, I, I just I, I hope we have some Lancastrian descendants tonight that are watching or listening. Yeah, I notice we don't have any Lancasters in the in that the are, club. I, I, I just hope <laughs> I, I just hope we have some that are out there. Maybe this is your first time tuning in. And you're you're English, or uh, you know, are just uh, just just really uh, concerned about some of these uh, kind of uh, historic things. And I. I hope you just give us an earful. I, I, I would have a, I'd have a lot of fun with that. I really would. Now, um, all right. So so I, I tell you what. Let me let me give a little bit of background. Go and ahead. Pull it all the way back. Go ahead. And, yeah. and you shared we shared some of this last episode, um, but uh, but at the begin in the beginning of this podcast, pretty early on. Uh, I think is when I discovered that that there was that other blend that we just talked about. That's right. There's, there's no reason to mention his name again, and, <laughs> and and I was I was taken back. I was like, how dare you? Like, what 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 what, what has happened here? And then of course, you know, learning the the story and everything else uh, made me all the matter because you can't be mad at it because of the story. That's right. That's it. right. Um, however, from that get go, I was like, well, there needs to there must be a York blend. We have to do this, and so uh, we started a. 
uh, I, we called it a loose end last last episode. It was certainly a loose end, but it's been tied up now, which is great. <laughs> which was it was the the art of blending. It was going to be a series in which we kind of determined what the York tobacco was, and you know we we went through some different concepts. We talked about um, different things I was into, and I was very conflicted because on the one hand, um, you know, with Lancaster being caramel and with York so associated with chocolate and mint chocolate that sort of thing, it seemed the natural kind of like you know in your face. Uh, revenge a way to go about it. Yeah, yeah. However, uh, you're th you're referring to obviously the York peppermint patty. Yes, like, so, right, right. Yes, right. of which uh, unfortunately, um, if if uh, if you work for the York peppermint patty, that I might be related. So send the money. I I would love that. <laughs> um, we'll make a blend for you too. Yeah, probably. yeah. right. <laughs> and I do enjoy the York peppermint patty, but honestly, it's just it's not kind of my my preferred flavor. And so sure. I felt very conflicted. We go sure. chocolate, and you even gave me a lot of different tobaccos. I got pulled over by the cops once uh, with my unmarked. <laughs> tobacco bags and everything else like no no they're, they're I'm, I'm sampling because we're making a blend have you ever heard of a podcast you know talking my <laughs> way out explain of that all this stuff yeah that was kind of like the tsa agent yeah. when i was in uh O'Hare. <laughs> Right, he looked at me, and I was like, "I just came from a pipe smoking, uh, you know, convention, a tobacco pipe tobacco." And he's like, "Sir, you know, whatever you do on your own time is your own, <laughs> your, that's that's your own business." <laughs> that's great, but uh, but anyway, so so it kind of it kind of you know it was just kind of out there, and and it's always I think been at the back of our minds, and uh, and so the big conflict though was I I really liked the idea of like a honey flavored tobacco. We sure. even kicked around the idea, and you, you I remember this was like a year or two ago. You were mentioning that that you know honey is kind of a difficult like flavor to come by in the tobacco world. It 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 is it is it's, it's a tough uh it's a tough one to blend with and and I think people um it, it's a tough one to blend with and also we'll get into this more in a minute but um it's also kind of polarizing and so I, I think there's a reason some people have stayed away from it but I <laughs> I felt like I was up for the challenge I, I hope you I hope you agree when you smoke it. <laughs> well, all right, so that's and that there there it is right there. So last episode two hundred as a gift you you uh, created the white rose. That's right. Uh, ca car ca carrying and to some extent concluding tying that nice little loose end into right. a bow. That's right. And also launching a, a, a new product here at the Country Squire. And uh, it, it, the the room note is great. I got to uh, smoke it that night. It smokes delicious. And uh, and you know the funny thing is I was so taken back last episode. I didn't get into any of our other loose ends just because I was so blown away <laughs> and, and honored by the gift. Uh, and we don't even have to ever talk about those other loose ends. We'll just let them be loose for another. No, they're just episodes. loose. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll just wait till three hundred. But that brings us to uh, <laughs> what is probably the crown achievement of uh, the country squire, John David Cole's magnum opus. Is that a thing? That is ridiculous. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The, no, the, the White Rose of Country Squire. So, right so White Rose. Obviously, uh, we're talking about, of course, and referring to the White Rose of the the House of York. Um, um, it, this is uh, a Burley and Cavendish mixture, and it's something again I wanted to make uh, unique for Bo, um, uh, but I also wanted to make um, you know something that uh, you know. I think would evoke thoughts uh, in in people. I mean, this is a this is not just something I made for Bo, but also um, you know, as as we referred to last week, this is a a tobacco that when you purchase, you'll actually be supporting the podcast in specific, which yep. which is kind of fun. We wanted to do that. I, it was something I wanted to do, um, and 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 surprised with Bo. But um, so you know, so th this is this is not going to be. How do I put this? This is going to be one of if you if you if you got. If you got some white rose, this would be one of the um, most unique things in your cellar. White rose, uh, it is, it's a honey flavor. Mm -hmm. Honey is hard to pull off in a pipe tobacco. Um, it, 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 it either is not enough or it's way too much. <laughs> right. You don't want to go too sweet. And that happens quick. Yeah. And it happens really quick. And, and, and the subtlety of learning, uh, you know, where do you, where do you exchange the, uh, you know, uh, perfuminess uh, versus mellowness. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. There, there's as as a tobacconist, you kind of look at this flavor wheel in your mind, right? Um, and, and 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 you're you're balancing, uh, you know, some of you know this spectrum on one side off the other spectrum, and you're just constantly uh, kind of turning it in, until you feel like kind of all the um, components have come together to the symphony. And 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 the honey element in a pipe tobacco. Um, it's just, it's just hard, Bo. It just really is for whatever reason. So, so I worked really hard on this tobacco. Um, 
I think initially, uh, what the smoker is going to get when you open the jar and smell it, you're going to smell honey. Oh yeah, you, you really will. You'll smell uh, like a like a honey pot. Um, what what I think is interesting, and I, I'd, I'd love to hear feedback from this from from some of our more uh, sophisticated pipe smokers that that are out there, but um, there is a there's a rose water note Ooh. that is Ooh. that is floating beneath the honey. Uh, in this particular tobacco. And, and and what's fascinating, even, you know, as we're talking about uh, the White Rose and the War of the Roses and, and uh, you know, uh, England and these things, um, you know, that, that rosewater, uh, you know, kind of uh, floral note that you get from these Lakeland tobaccos, uh, people uh, in, in the Lakeland region of England, uh, mm -hmm. think uh, Sam Gaywith and Gaywith and Hogarth. Uh, you know, some of these Lakeland style tobaccos that had this kind of uh, rose water thing. It wasn't even really intentional, but it's kind of it's kind of an undercurrent there in white rose. And so you, you've got honey, but then you've also got this rose water element that's underneath. Um, and, and, and if you dig deeper, you, you might even find uh, very delicate notes of of alcohol. And, and and particularly rum, which I oh! which I which I think is kind of fun. That's so, awesome. Um, but 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 the the tobacco is a uh, it, it's a mixture of uh, of Cavendish and uh, and Burley. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a complex tobacco. So there, there's a lot going on. But the the different Cavendish that's in there uh, it, it is heavily cased, um, and the Burley is. Um, is, is also have the case, but it's also relatively dry. So this is not by any means a, a real syrupy tobacco. Um, you know, it's one of those that uh, is, is certainly powerfully aromatic, but um, but it's not one of those that I think, uh, you know, when you get done with the bowl, you'll be like, man, what on earth did that do to my pipe? <laughs> right, 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 you know? right. So, uh, but, but it certainly is a, is a unique aroma. I think the honey with the rose water, it's certainly... Um, it, 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 it's very unique. And, and I do think if you're an aromatic smoker or maybe a um, non-aromatic smoker that likes to dabble in aromatics occasionally, um, th this will be a one of a kind, uh, you know, addition to your, to your cellar. You will not have any tobacco in your cellar anywhere like <laughs> White Rose. <laughs> well, kind of like Bo York. Well, hey, hey, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so, uh, so find me, put me in your cellar. Wait, that that's right. That sounds that th sounds kind of creepy. It, it, <laughs> if you can't lock me, I, I got to be careful about. Wait, did I did I watch this episode on Criminal Minds right, last night? Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, turns out he had a podcast. Uh, I know, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so check it out. White Rose, both White Rose and Lancaster will be uh, here at. Uh, the the country squire this week for for sampling yeah and of course they're available uh, for purchase on our website as in well. fact white rose just went available online today yep uh, today so so check it out here's here's what we'd love for you to do try it sample it those of you who've got YouTube channels and everything would love to to you know have you guys review it on the YouTube channel all That's that right. kind of good stuff and uh, and I'll, you know I'll, I'll be looking for those because I'm um, uh, you know it's 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 not about it's not just about like, you know, like really like promoting White Rose and, and promoting the House of York. It's about crushing It's about Lancaster. the feast, right. It's about, it's it's about, about vindication. It's about sweet revenge. Right. And so from that standpoint, That's right. yeah. uh, and by the way, if your name is Lancaster, I encourage you even more so uh, to review it online. <laughs> if, if we have any Lancasters out there, actually, I would love to know or, just to you know, or, or anyone from maybe uh, Lancashire, England, or any of this kind of thing, like, I, you know, let it, let us hear from you. We we would like to have some con conversation. Now you remember when I was in uh, <laughs> when I was in London? What was that last year? I guess. Um, like I went everywhere and everything was named Lancaster. And like I got a selfie by all the signs. <laughs> Such like, a jerk. I feel a chill in the air as I walk down <laughs> the street or walk into Lin Lancaster Gate. I don't even know if the people from the city of York and London would would or the city of York and England would actually associate with you. They'd probably be kind of embarrassed. No, your, no, this by is by your preoccupation with it. But but I, I don't know. It's probably a thing. York and Lancaster, uh, both both kind of what provinces, cities, whatever you call it. That's right. They're both in northern England, and they um, they have kind yeah. of a, a friendly rivalry, which I would say to some extent That's this fair. is it's probably less friendly and did, more bloodthirsty yeah. did, did, <laughs> <laughs> did, did you know okay so so the 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 story to wrap up the story of the war of the roses of course yeah, yeah. um uh, R R richard the third was defeated uh I, I forget the the name of the battle uh that he was defeated at but um the the tudors rose right. and of course you had henry the seventh that that became uh the founder of the the tudor uh the dynasty right uh it tudor it technically was a lancaster um but
what happened is he married Elizabeth of York, which was uh, Richard's niece and the uh, the oldest daughter of his brother. Okay, and of course, you know her younger brothers. Richard the Third kind of did away with. They got, you know, like they, he, no, they were in the in the castle. Yeah, or we, in look, the, in we, the, we destroyed ourselves when it came down to it. The yeah, Yorks killed themselves. It's, 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 it's pretty ugly, right? <laughs> right but right. but so anyway, what what what's interesting though is, of course, you had the the union of through the Tudor lineage, you had the union of Lancasters and Yorks. That's and right. if you look today at the at the crest of the House of Tudor, mm -hmm. it's actually a red rose and a white rose superimposed on each other. That's so, right. So they've actually united both the houses with Lancasters and Yorks. Um, and uh, and I, I think there's something uh, something to be said for that. Maybe there's a new blend in the works. Oh, snap! I'm just saying. Oh, man. <laughs> it's about to be on like Plantain John. <laughs> That's really lame. Oh, that's so lame. Oh, man. Well, you know what's not lame? Missouri Meerschaum. Missouri Meerschaum. <laughs> no, I was going to say the good, uh, the, the amazing quality corn cob pipes that you find at Missouri Meerschaum. That is absolutely correct, man. <laughs> it, it was so funny. You know, we had uh, several folks come in from out of town today. And, um, as a pipe shop, you know, we have a lot of folks that come in. Uh, if, if you live in an area that doesn't have a pipe shop, uh, you know, you might go into your local cigar shop or mm -hmm. something like that, and you'll see, uh, you know, a couple corn cobs or, you know, maybe they've got this or that. But when you walk into a real pipe shop and you see just dozens of, of bona fide Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipes, <laughs> uh, it can be kind of overwhelming because, you know, you you, you find there's uh, there's long stemmed ones and there's stained ones and there's ones with uh, amber stems and and and, uh, and and the, you know, traditional stems. You've got ones that look like cigars and, yeah. um, you know, you ones the that big freaking general, the little tiny. Little that, that's thing, exactly yeah. right. They're just kind of all over the map. And, uh, and and I think people are really impressed with the variety variety that they've come out with. Yeah. And I, you know, I think of when I, when I think of Missouri Meerschaum and, and, you know, doing unique things with corn cob pipes, I think, uh, the great Dane is one that comes to mind for me as, as a really just a very unique shape. Um, I, I would say, uh, to some extent textbook Missouri Meerschaum. And by that, I mean, that's they right. threw out the textbook and wrote their own. Like it's, it's, <laughs> that's it's right. Really beautiful pipe. Uh, comes in a straight and a, uh, and a bent variety as well. Uh, the, the great Dane, uh, is, is a spindle pipe. And so we look at it, you look at uh, almost like a, uh, an old yard yarn spindle. Uh, it's been kind of carved the, the cob itself in that way. Of course, it uh, has a really nice wood accented shank, uh, with the traditional black stem, uh, which is just really sharp. So it's a hefty pipe, good, good kind of chunky pipe. So uh, the Great Dane, uh, as its name would infer, uh, would be one that you could load up and sit there for quite a while, uh, maybe lazily, like with your Great Dane. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, hey, if you've got a Great Dane from Missouri Meerschaum, be sure to smoke it this week. Uh, take a picture of yourself, tweet it into us. We'll retweet it out as well. It's a great way to let the folks at Missouri Meerschaum know you appreciate them for helping sponsor this show. That's right. All right, pipe question of the week this week comes in from Austin Baker. Now, this is a great question. Hey, Austin. Because I know that it's one that's like like near and dear to your heart. Yeah. Uh, he asks, <laughs> so I know that you're not supposed to take out the stem after or during smoking the pipe. Right. But <laughs> does that apply to screw-in stems as well? That's, uh, this, this is a great question. Yeah. And, and you know, it, technically probably the answer is is no. So you've got, you've got two, um, you know, kind of, kind of two schools of thought here. Uh, one is, you know, there's a certain type of pipe that's made for taking apart when it's hot. You've got military mount stems and typically screw in tenons as well. Uh, the screw typically is made with uh, a stinger device that uh, is a metal device that kind of screws into, uh, you know, the, um, the end of the shank. Uh, through whatever uh, mechanism, you know, however they drilled that in there, whether it be into, uh, you know, briar, typically it's some kind of, uh, you know, resin or plastic or something like that. But, you know, if, if it's a, if it's a screw in or a mil military style mount, typically it's safe to take apart your pipe uh, while it's hot. You've got people like me <laughs> that are going to tell you, don't take a barber your pipe when it's hot ever. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's, that's just kind of a, I, I've just seen way too many accidents with pipes and, uh, and things like that. I want people to protect their investment. And, uh, I think that, that for me comes from the person that, you know, is sitting behind the counter has sold someone, a, a $300, you know, Savinelli, uh, you know, and, and they walk out and then a week later they come in, they're like, my stem doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> and I would just want to shake them by their throat. <laughs> <laughs> because I told them, do not take your pipe apart when it's hot. You know, it's just one of those things. So, 
Um, I, I sound kind of like a broken record with that. But yeah, if you have a screw in stem, uh, typically uh, it is okay to take that apart uh, when, when your pipe is hot. And uh, of course, a military mount style stem, th those are um, actually made for that. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're in good shape there. Uh, regardless, the, the main thing, the, the biggest concern and, and place you area you want to take care with a screw in tenon um, is over screwing it. Okay. So people, you know, after a while with these screw in tenons, which I, I despise to be quite honest with you, mm. but uh, w when you screw them in, you know, a after a while, a lot of people are like, man, my, my, the stem and the, and the shank don't line up anymore. Or, you know, maybe, you know, if you screw it in all the way, you finally, you screw it in maybe a little too tight. And then all of a sudden the stem is maybe, you know, uh, turned over a few degrees more than it should be. Oh yeah. It, does that make sense? Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if you ever have one of these stems, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and, and so then we got to, you know, work with getting some pliers in there and kind of, you know, trying to redirect, uh, you know, the, um, the angle there. So it's not overcorrected and all that kind of stuff. So just, just be careful, uh, when you're screwing in the, the stem, uh, not to overdo it. You don't want to put more pressure than is necessary. Uh, it will hurt the, hurt the, the stem, uh, or the pipe that way. Uh, but, but you're fine to take it apart when it's, uh, when it's hot. That's good, man. Well, you know, it's funny because um, if, if if I have learned nothing on this podcast, it is that John David does not like for me to take the stem out of the bowl while it's hot. No, it's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not acceptable. I've chided people like shamelessly, like as, as they've sat, like like people that I really should be trying to get on their good side. Right. You know, the, the business person in me just throws all that to the wind. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, <laughs> don't take your pipe apart when it's hot. Just don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Well, Austin, uh, great pipe question. Thank you so much for sending that in. And hey, if you've got a pipe question of the week, you can send it in show at Country Squire Radio. Also, Facebook, Twitter, great places to do it as well. But show at Country Squire Radio. Com. Quick fire questions. Ow! All right. These quick fire questions coming in from the forums over at thispipelife.com. Thispipelife.com. More on that in just a minute here. All right. This is actually from SL Carico. Uh, Car Carico. Carico. I think you got it right. Yes. Um, and these, he says, are uh, lint inspired. So here oh. we go. And that's um Yeah. So, oh, okay. So which, oh, which would, would you give up for 40 days? Exactly. Which would you rather give up for 40 days? Okay. okay. All right. All right. You ready for this? All right. Go for it. Pipe or smartphone? Smartphone. Any day of the week. I, I just for 40 days. Yeah, I, I know. Now, it's saying, which would I rather give up? Right. Like, okay. 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 Yeah, 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 like, yeah. okay. In a, uh, okay. So let, let's approach it from that angle. Like uh, in, in a perfect world, I would be able to give up my smartphone for 40 days and not have to talk to you <laughs> or to anyone, <laughs> you know, I would not have to check Facebook or right. anything. And that would frankly be very good for my spirit. Um, now, practically, you know, if I had to give up my pipe or my smart smartphone, um, you know, I, I don't think I could do my smartphone in today's world. You know, that'd be an interesting, like, like, uh, documentary style study like like take someone and have them take up the pipe for 40 days yeah. like like give up their smartphone like get, like get, get like a smartphone addict get them to give up yeah. the, the smartphone for 40 days take up the pipe instead i bet they'd be way more like less, are less stressed out no i think i think it. you're right i mean it, looking at this question it's even like okay which would you rather give up for 40 days your pipe or your smartphone right. like like the the pipe is the thing that i have that i don't get enough of that i want more of <laughs> the smartphone is the thing that i have that I get way too much of that I want less of, but I have to have. Yeah. So it's like, man, screw the smartphone. <laughs> I don't know. That's give, good, give, me, man. give me the pipe any day of the week. Yeah, you've convinced me. I'm 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 the exact same. You know, actually I took Facebook off of my phone. Like I I, I downloaded you can get the, you did? Yeah, you can get the pages and the groups. So like everything for work I still like have yeah. access to. Yeah. But I removed like the personal Facebook. Oh, like app. that. Yeah. So you you can get on it. Right. Man, I right. cannot tell you how much like Dude, my that's stress a great went idea. down. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So you can still manage your pages. Still manage and my pages. All that stuff, but you don't but you're not connected. You know, every time someone, you know, likes a picture of your you know, uh, oh, I'm not putting my kids on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, but well, you know, right, right. every time someone posts their dessert that they got it, you know, the don't ever see uh, it. You don't, you never see it. So exactly. yeah, I, I like that. I like it's, that. It's a good move. Okay, what's right. next? Coffee or TV? I would rather give up. If I gave up coffee for Lent, it would push me very close to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably what I need to say yes to. I will say coffee. <laughs> you know, I would suffer for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think probably TV because the TV, like TV, and yeah. I'll just throw kind of video games in there as well. Yeah, it's sure. Just, I think that's lumped in. It's something that I go to just to like, I just need to, like, I just need to escape, right? It's, it's the escapism of it. Yeah. And so I think that um, going to escapism as a crutch is probably something to, to turn away from yeah. at least in, in my life so uh and okay. also literally without the coffee i'd probably have a migraine you so. <laughs> would suffer yeah books or web surfing uh web surfing it's kind of like the pipe or the smartphone yeah. kind of thing like i i've I, I have books but i don't have enough of them in my life i want more the web surfing i have them i kind of have to have it and i don't want it uh Forget the web surfing. Yeah, you make a very compelling Give argument. Give me the books. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Listening to music or the news? Uh, the news. Get rid of the news. Come yeah, on. forget the news. Yeah. Although you can get satchel news, but that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, your favorite drink or snacking? Ooh, that one might be the hardest one. Um, all right, so which one would I rather give up? Wait, so you, Boodles? <laughs> Boodle, boodles. Would you say that's your favorite drink? Boodles or, yeah, or... um. Like licorice. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I do love licorice, but it's not my favorite snack. Um, we, we've learned a lot about you and your. Hey, we, of yeah, we have. It's disgusting. Um, yeah, I, I'd probably, I, I don't know. I'd probably have to go with my favorite drink because snacking happens often. Yeah. So, I, so I'll go with. I'd rather get my my, uh, my favorite drink. All right. Yeah, I um definitely snacking. I need to give up snacking anyway. I've been trying. You've lost weight. I, I go back and forth. I'm like right at the cusp where I need, I can either go up or down and I need to, I need to be healthy. That's, <laughs> that's what I need to do right now. Uh, these are great quick fire questions, by the way, again, from uh, SL Carico. That's uh, right. From this pipe Now that's uh, his handle over at this pipe uh, Awesome website, amazing online community. If you've not checked it out yet, uh, you absolutely should. This pipe is where you go. You register using the code CSR. It's free to register, but when you use the code CSR, it lets them know you heard about it on the show, which is uh, a great thing to do. We also uh, want you to check them out on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. They've got all of so your much social awesome spaces. content. Yeah. yeah. You got a YouTube channel as well. So, so, so really, check them out. ThisPipeLife.com. Let them know you heard about it on Country Square Radio by using that code CSR when you register at ThisPipeLife.com. Listen to feedback this week. Now, uh, last week, of course, we had um, a lot of uh, very, very kind words that were sent in uh, from our 200th episode. Yeah. And, and I want to read just a couple of these real quick. Very uh, moving. Yep. JD Smoking Pipe says, uh, great show, guys. Congrats on the big 200. Dad and I appreciate all of your hard work. Uh, God bless. And he gives us a fist bump. Two thumbs up and a beer. So, <laughs> so that, that's from JD Smoking Pipes. That's is that from right? JD Smoking Pipes. That, that's awesome. I, I was actually smoking uh, a JD Smoking Pipe uh, last week on the show uh, for for our two hundredth. That's and, uh, awesome, man, uh, Jim. It's always great to hear from you, brother. Gene, as I mentioned, I wrote in said congrats on the two hundredth episode. He, that he just joined the Pipe Club uh, yesterday, which we really appreciate. We also have uh, Chris Turgeon. Turgeon. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah, go sure. With that. Uh, we got Chris T. Uh, in, Chris and, T. In all fairness, this is how he starts it out. Bo, possibly name butchered? <laughs> uh, yes. And JD, I've been listening to you guys for like six to eight months now. You put uh, out an awesome podcast. You've got a real unique uh, thing going on. Congratulations on episode 200 uh, from the pipe community in colorful Colorado. Mm -hmm. So. That's, that's really kind. Thank you so much, Chris. And then we also had uh, Proto Piper on YouTube. He says, congratulations, fellas. Keep up the great work. Um, and guys, we, we just really, really appreciate those, uh, those thoughts as, uh, yeah. as, yeah, as, uh, from that was, that was, it was definitely an experience. I know there's been some folks that have uh, said, Hey, episode 300, y'all gonna do it live again. A lot of people really want to come, but, uh, are, are kind of have that, uh, that regret that they weren't able to make it this time. So yeah, we'll see in two years. Yeah, I was about to say, hit us up in two years. And we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But, uh, but no, it was, uh, it was a blast and, and big ups to all of you who were able to join us, uh, especially those in, in shop, but, uh, those that were able to tune in to the live show, those of you that were able to enjoy it, that download it, and those of you who are able to download the podcast on a weekly basis, whether you've been listening for a few weeks or for a few years, we just really appreciate you um, for really being why this show is here. And um, you know, you're you're literally the reason we still do this. Absolutely. I mean, I, <laughs> like I, I I hope you understand that. Like you know, we we talk about our community a lot, but uh, Bo and I would not do this every week if it weren't for the amazing people we've met. Uh, through this and um and we mean that yeah except for these memes i, I mean that's the thing the memes are getting <laughs> 
<laughs> tonight, tonight, the re- those are the reason I keep coming. See, this is what happens. <laughs> and I'll tell you this in terms of uh, this, this kind of falls under listener feedback in terms of the tweets that we've been getting into. That's fantastic. Right before we went live, um, you know, you, you, you were taking a little extra time getting ready. Yeah. And so, uh, so I, I was like, oh. tradition. I was like, I'm going to throw John David under the bus and take a little screenshot of me in front of like two mics without you. Right. Like, right. Like, hey, one of us is here. <laughs> <laughs> and um and the uh the listeners have they've had a blast with that full force with that oh one. it's fantastic look at that it's it's just a picture of you pointing at the screen and uh and and saying you're ready and i'm not and, yeah and yet and yet everyone is having so much fun we got the uh on, on, on like plantation so got that one uh, that, that 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 that's that's a good straight one. Quote. there's one here that's actually uh do you know what movie that's from right there uh Cre- creepy dude saying found bo york put him in my cellar no I, d- I do not that's uh that's that's lovely um we've also got uh <laughs> wait, anything involving a poodle I know, and, a, and a, a half naked bow i i'm i'm just thrilled about uh, let's see <laughs> Do you like honey long walks on the beach, poodles, whatever brisket? Is, barbecue, and yeah, kissing. so wait, so 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 yeah, we had some fun last week also about the brisket thing. Of course, Bo, uh, <laughs> Bo, not knowing what animal that necessarily comes from. Um, yeah, and, hang uh, on, hang on. Let me let me just tell you. No, no, no. Let me let me. Let, I got to clear my name here. Okay. Because the day after we recorded live, uh, Mike, who we gave a shout out to last week, who's our, our post production uh, producer for the show. Right. Big ups to Mike. Uh, he came into town. He lives in Biloxi. He came up to town just for a visit. Uh, I, I took him out to Pig and Pint okay. uh, here. And I got to tell you, I had some of the best chicken brisket <laughs> I have ever had in my entire life. In fact, I, I ordered it there. Did right it live then. up to their alligator brisket? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'll ask him for it next time. Because I told him, I was like, I, I want your best, best brisket. Uh, it, like, give me the best cut of chicken brisket that you can possibly Chicken brisket. Get yeah, and, that's uh, great. I've that's, never that's tasted awesome. chicken that tasted like that before. It was the yeah. best chicken I've ever had. That's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so that dark, pint, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out that it, brisket. That's that's fantastic. That dark meat chicken, you know, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 that's that's great. <laughs> well, guys, thank y'all so much um, for, for tuning in tonight and, uh, and for sending all the great listener feedback. Hey, you can keep up with us throughout the week. You can also check out the ridiculousness that is the memes that come from the live show by uh, checking out our Twitter handle, at Squire Radio. Yeah, how, how do people do that, Bo? Because we have folks that aren't necessarily into Twitter a lot, but they hear about this stuff. So so if they wanted to see some of this incredible content that is provided by the likes of the people listening sure, to this, sure. h- how, do, how do they look for that? Twitter.com slash Squire Radio. Radio. Okay. Um, and actually, if you go to countrysquareradio.com, we got a link that says Twitter. Just click that. It'll take you right there. Right. You'll um, get to see the feed and how people are interacting with the show and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And it, it actually, if you just do a, 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 a go on Twitter and just search at Square Radio, right. then you can see all of those comments and everything else. The stuff that we would <laughs> never retweet. The guys, we would never retweet. Come on. Y'all know better. <laughs> But, but, they know exactly what they're doing. I know, I know they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> but anyway, you can find that again on Twitter at Squire Radio. Uh, you can follow us individually as well. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And of course, all that information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio.com, where we broadcast live Monday nights uh, for the after hours show that we have here at 8 30 p.m. Central Time. That's 6 30 Pacific, 9 30 Eastern. Again, that is at Country Squire Radio. Dot com. Now, I should have mentioned this at the top of the show. Uh, this week, as in fact, as this podcast goes out live, I will actually be in the New York City area. Um, typically, whenever oh, I yeah. like, yeah, whenever yeah, I travel, I, I try about to put that. that out there. And I, That's I great. forgot to do that. But uh, hey, if you're in NYC, I, I don't know what my schedule is going to be like, but uh, but hit me up on Twitter. I'd love to connect if, if there's some time available. So uh, to uh, to the New York City uh, Pipe Club, I know a lot of them actually meet in the um, – uh, what, do you, what do you call the upstate New York? Is that what it's called? I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the New York City Pipe Club actually meets a little bit north. A of, little north of yeah. New York. Yeah, itself. Yeah. But, uh, but one way or the other, if you're in the area, love to connect with you. So, uh, so yeah, hit me up. It just sh- shows what how different people Bo and I are. Like Bo, Bo goes out of town and he announces, "Hey, I'm going to be out of town. Come, you know, tell me where you're at and let me come come see me." And I go out of town and I'm the little introvert that's like. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> like it's your hat, and your shades, and everything. Well, that's the thing. It's like, amazing. Like I, I, I look like. Well, I've got a face that's obviously made for meme, whereas you have like a whole <laughs> persona and identity that's made for uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, Radio. Best form of flattery is 
Imitation. Imitation. <laughs> your, your whole look. <laughs> that's ridiculous. You've seen the Mark VV. Uh, no, that's pretty good. Oh, man. It's, it's, it's a thing. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Well, anyway, if, I hope you connect with some, some of our great friends up in that uh, part of the world. Hey, man, I hope you have a wonderful time uh, selling this white rose and not that other blend that there's no reason to even mention it. We won't even talk about don't it. Don't even mention it. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to try the Lancaster, you could. Just don't, you know, it's fine. We don't have to talk about it any, any, other, any other way. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Wait, man. Let's go have a night. See you, brother. Thanks, guys, so much for tuning in to the live show. We love y'all so much. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Thanks so much. And again, for those of you that tuned in last week to help us celebrate 200, uh, it, it was Silence really... Silence the Lambs. Sorry. They're giving me a hard Silence time. Silence the Lambs. Silence the Lambs. I, I knew yeah. it was. I, I just... I was it looked familiar. I mean, I just couldn't... I couldn't place it. But, what was the... Here's um, Johnny. You know what I mean? With... Uh, what's his face? Is that Johnny Carson? No, 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 no. You're um, talking about... Uh, the, Dude, he's like busting down the door. He's like got his head through the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Freaking... Um, <sighs> Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, but that that wasn't Silence of the Lambs, though. I don't think. No. No, that was. Um, no, I get those... Silence of the Lambs is freaking um, yes, yes. Anthony Hopkins, right? Yes, uh, with a with a nice county. God, that's disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> but for whatever reason, the name of those two films I end up getting like mixed up. Get bit, yeah, movie. mixed up. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, you know me. I don't watch movies at all, so <laughs> I'm just I'm completely lost. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. Thanks for listening. Okay, see ya.